will become by itself. In situations like this, you could do all of that in a very quick one step. Okay. So what does cross multiplying mean? Cross multiplying means anything, if it wants to cross to the other side of the equal sign, if it's on the bottom, it goes to the top. If it's on the denominator, it goes to the numerator. And if it's on the the numerator, it goes on the, to, to the denominator when it crosses the equal sign. So if you're on top and you want to cross the equal sign, you go to the bottom. If you're on the bottom and you want to cross the equal sign, you go to the top. So let's start working with these questions to understand what I mean. Uh, so there we go. So here, let's look at this. What do I want to isolate, which variable I want to have by itself is the X. Where is the negative two? The negative two is on the bottom. Now, if it went across to the other side of the equal sign, it goes to the top. Now, cross multiply. So when it crosses, whatever it moves, it's gonna get multiplied into that. So now you're asking me, is uh, seven on top or on the bottom? Well, seven is over one. So seven is obviously on top. We don't have to write one on the bottom to, do, to cross multiply. You don't have to do that. All you need to do is just cross multiply the negative two. It's on the bottom, it goes to the top. So it becomes X equals seven times negative two, which is negative 14. Now here, we have a sticky situation here where we have X on the bottom. So here X was on top. So to solve for it, all I need to do is move the negative two to the other side of the equal sign, cross multiply it. But here X is on the bottom. So here I have to do two things simultaneously. I have to cross the X because if you want to solve for a variable, you always want it to be on top. You don't want it to be on the bottom because if it's on the bottom, you'll end up with one over X. So to get rid of that and you don't have to do extra steps, what we do here, we cross. So both the X have to cross and the three has to cross. They slip simultaneously. The three crosses, the three is on top. Like it's on the other side of the equal sign. It's on top of one. So if it crosses, it's gonna to go to the bottom of the other fraction and the X is on the bottom on the left. If it's gonna cross, it's gonna to go to the top. The top is exactly where the three is. So what this does here, you'll have 39, the three crosses to the other side, to the left, it goes to the bottom and the X crosses to the right of the equal sign and it goes to the top. So therefore X equals 39 divided by three is 13. Now, how about when it's a little bit complicated like this? Same thing. I want to isolate the X. Remember, this is what I want it to be by itself. So it wants to stay on the left side by itself right there. So to solve for X, you want to isolate X. This five is on the bottom. It goes across the equal signs, goes to the top. The two crosses goes to the bottom. And that could do, be done in one step. So you have 15 over 20. And therefore, this will end up being um, reduced by five, reduced by five. So five goes into 15 three times, five goes into 24 times. So you end up with X equals three over four. Okay. Now, how about here? So here, again, just you want the X to be by itself but the X here is on the bottom. So we don't want it to be on the bottom. Can I do all of this in one step? Yes, I can. Um, as long as you know, if you're crossing the equal sign, if you're on the bottom, you go to the top. And if you're on the top to go to the bottom, you could do everything simultaneously. You want the X to go there. And at the same time, you want the three to come where the X is and you want the eight to go there. So now watch this. This becomes eight times nine over two, which stays there, and the three comes where the X is, so times three equals, and the X goes to where the three is. So all of this is done in one step, one step. And now, if you wanna like reduce from here, you could go two goes into itself once, goes into eight, four times, and three goes into itself once, goes into nine, three times, and three times four is 12, 12 over one, or X equals 12. So here's two more questions that I'm gonna do. Now, cross multiplying, you want to isolate for the X. Here is X plus two. What you want to do in this one here, you just want to cross the four only right now. So X plus two equals 36. Four times nine is 36 over six. Now X plus two equals six. Move the two to the other side. Becomes X equals six minus two. 
which equals four. So very quick. Now here, the X is on the bottom. So remember, I said these have to exchange places and the two goes right there. So now that will give me 30 and the three will come where the X minus one is and the X minus one will go where the three is. So when you cross multiply, you cannot say, oh, I'm gonna cross multiply the negative one by itself. No, you can't. This, you, if you have to cross multiply the whole thing in here. So now this gives me 10 equals X minus one move the negative one to the other side, it gives you X equals 11. And this is it for cross multiplying. Uh, use it, it's, it's such an efficient tool, you know, like in physics and chemistry, math. If you, if you know how to cross multiply, you start playing with that algebra like this, you know? So anyways, thanks for watching. Till next time, bye-bye.